everybody, this is Scott Weinkibwes from Photocrati. Today I want to show you 10 WordPress actions that you could take on your website that go beyond just advice. These are actual things that I strongly recommend implementing for your website. So first one, um, a lot of photographers will go with the free Contact Form 7 Contact Form plugin. But if you're using Gravity Forms, which is what I personally recommend, then I would suggest underneath the form areas where everybody would, where your site visitors would fill in the information, to go down, all the way down to the bottom, and add these. These are hidden fields. This one says Campaign Source. Go to Advanced and allowing it to populate dynamically using UTM underscore source basically means if you're advertising for a contact form, for a newsletter sign up, for any sort of opt-in, anything that, we, that you're advertising that brings to a form, that campaign information will go to that form hidden from the front end um, you know, visitors, from the people who are clicking to your site, but you'll get that information, which means you can see when people are submitting this to you, where they're coming from if it's coming from an, an ad that's using that, um, the, you know, the Google URL tracker. We at Photocrati recommend WordPress SEO by Yoast as the SEO plugin that you, that you should use on your website. But um, what many people overlook is how, um, how precise you can make the article, how optimized you can really make it by following the page analysis. So, when you write the post, go down to the bottom to the WordPress SEO section. Make sure you have in that focus keyword that you got your SEO title and meta description all good to go. Save the draft or update the post depending on what um, pro what already you know where you are in the post um, process. Then go to page analysis and you're going to see different actions that you could take in order to improve the SEO of this article. When you are good to go. To update the uh, page analysis, save a draft or update to check this tab again. So do that and you'll see everything change based on what you've done um, in the content. You can also go ahead and uh, you know adjust the advance as needed and of course you can make um, custom social media uh, stuff for the open graph and Twitter cards and, and uh, schema markup that's all included here. But make sure that you go through this page analysis and fine tune the post to make it optimized as needed. Adding a photograph or any image to a, a post or a page in WordPress. You are um, shown this insert media box and inside of it you have uh, the title, caption, and alt text and description. The description, I would just say disregard. You don't really need it at this point in time. Um, very few people actually use description. However, the ones you want to pay attention to are title, caption, and alt text. Basically, the title and alt text, you can make the same exact thing. This should be or include the keyword of the post or page that you're including the image on and also should match whatever the file name is of the image. You want that to be precise for search engines. The caption should be a nice description of what the photograph is or image is and should also include that keyword if possible that, uh, you know, will, basically this will be shown on the front end. It's the public. Description is not public. That's why we say to disregard it. Basically, the caption is a description of the image. The title and alt should be um, the keyword that you want this image to rank well for in search engines and you can make them match because it doesn't really make a difference. Search engines are going to look at the alt text. The title is what is visible on your site um, in text if the image is broken. So um, just make them match and you'll be fine. If you want to spend less time posting your articles, your new content out to social media and more time photographing, then we suggest installing uh, CoSchedule. It's a premium service. It's about $100 a year um, and there's ways you can get discounts on it. But what's really cool about it is on top of getting social analytics, you can connect Buffer. You can also connect basically any Facebook group you're a member of, as well as Facebook pages, Facebook per personal profiles, Twitter accounts, Google Plus pages, um, and let's see what else. Uh, you can also collect, I believe, connect LinkedIn and also Tumblr. So there's a lot of different things you can connect and they're constantly adding more um, as they build out the service. What's really cool is 
that you can actually go here and they're recommending different segments of when you should repost the content because it is important to repost your content. So you can say the same day as post, you can go here and you can actually choose from what you, where you want it to go to that you've connected in your co-schedule account. And then you can also you basically say link the, uh, make it a link post, an image post, or a text post. And if you do it with an image, if you have a featured image set for your post or your page, it'll automatically grab that image for you. Um, and then you can do day after, week after, month after, and then you can also do custom dates. And you can always go through and reschedule these anytime. And again, it gives you social analytics, and they also have a social analytics of the entire history of your site, of all of your posts, um, and showing basically um, what's popular and what has been, you know, uh, engaged well, so you can repost it. And as well, and in addition to that, if you have a team, so if you are not a single photographer, if you have a team of, of uh, employees, then you can also create tasks and assign the different articles for different people to, um, if you have a, an assistant, you want them to schedule all the posts, you can just say new task for that assistant, they can go through and schedule the posts for you so you don't have to do that. So there you go, that is co-schedule in a nutshell, um, but there's also one little, one more trick with co-schedules, they have a full editorial calendar where you can see it all both on your website at coschedule.com and also you can also add it to your Google Calendar. So you can see here as it's loading up, here is my um, current editorial calendar and it's showing uh, my posts and it's also showing when everything is going out on social media and everything is customized and um, different locations. So that is co-schedule. One of the first things that you should do with your WordPress website is take it off of default permalink. So go to settings and then permalinks. And then the first thing is click on post name or uh, day and name or month and name, whatever you prefer, but do not use default. It's not friendly for search engines and it can also cause issues with some um, themes and plugins. Um, so we definitely recommend using one that's a lot friendlier for multiple reasons. And it's very easy. Um, as long as your host is set up with, uh, you know, WordPress uh, specifications for hosting, then all you should be able to do is go to post name and then hit save changes and it will update for you. WP Rocket has a fantastic plugin that does website monitoring. And the cool part is it doesn't require any paid subscription and it doesn't require you installing any plugin that does many other things. So all you have to do is do a search for um, WP Rocket monitoring in the, in the WordPress directory, install that, and then it'll prompt you to add in your email address. You do that, hit save changes, and you'll get an email pretty quick saying you're now being monitored. And then as soon as your website goes down, you're gonna get an email from WP Rocket saying your website is down, go check it out, and then you can contact your server, your, your, your host. So uh, there you go, WP Rocket website monitoring. This next one is specifically for Photocrati users. When you first install your Photocrati theme, be sure to look at all the different theme presets that are available to you because by default it it goes to one when you could really install or change your preset to something um, that is more customized more to your liking so for example you've got side style themes right here with a full screen background slideshow on the home page versus um, right here sort of the single column style with a nice bright background versus more minimal styles over here, some a little bit of colorful styles, some darker styles. So there's a variety of to choose from. Here is a, a single column with a background slideshow on the home page. So you've got a lot of variety to choose from. So don't just use the default preset unless that is exactly what you wanted. Look at all the different presets because in the end, you can also customize that and save your own preset like this. And you can share them with friends back them up, you can export it and back it up offline. So if you ever had a problem with your server and it went down and you need to recover, you can be sure that you have your backed up preset off your server. Um, so you can just re-import it like right here. Another plugin that we recommend at Photocrati is Google Analytics BIOS because it can easily add your Google Analytics script to your site 
with some additional options. But the important thing, what I really want to talk about here is not only just adding Google Analytics by Yoast, but making sure that you have your Google Analytics converted to universal tracking. This is actually a benefit to you because it's a more advanced analytics tracking and it also has the advantage of, um, of you, you know, you already be set up for the future for when Google converts everybody automatically to universal analytics. Um, so Google Analytics by Yoast now adds custom dimensions um, as an option, as well as other things to your um, to your your universal analytics inside of Google Analytics. And another advantage of Google Analytics by Yoast is that you now get this dashboard, the reporting right inside of your website. So you can easily go through and see some of your metrics and um, some other reports here. And then you can actually upgrade to the premium version if you really want for even more custom dimension reports. The next thing I want to talk about is actually Buffer My Posts. What this does is you actually connect your Buffer app account and then you can actually specify when you want articles to repost in Buffer. And you can choose what Buffer uh, social account you want it to go to. So as you can see here, I have in every eight hours, it'll look from 30 days to 365 days and will add one post from only posts, not pages, into my uh, Buffer accounts. And the advantage of this is that, and then I can also um, customize how I want it to look. Now the advantage of this is now, um, you can omit categories as well. So <laughs> the advantage of this is that now my buffer is constantly getting something new, even though it's old, it's getting something new to post. Every eight hours, it's getting something else. So if I forget to fill up my buffer at some point with, with new content, with fresh content, with new photos or whatever it is, buffer is always going to have something every eight hours for it to um, post out for me. The last thing I want to mention is actually to um, keep your portfolio organized in a user friendly manner. Okay. So well, by doing that, I mean, you can see here, I have a bunch of, um, these are actually albums of different galleries. I have the same thing. If you go here to photography, so it's now actually scottwine.com slash photography. And then down in the menu, I also have each of the albums all separated um, as well as here in the thumbnails. And if you go to what I call places, it actually goes to slash photography slash places. So this is actually friendly for people to know. And also search engines will see it as well. But I'm more, more concerned for this. I'm more concerned about the people being able to come back to it and find it and remember it easier than if they were to just um, have something super long. So um, I strongly recommend to make sure that your URLs are friendly, yes, for search engines, but also more importantly, for your site's visitors.